Yes, the vestments are assembled. Soon, the ritual will be complete. Soon, all the cookies in the world will be mine. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Regrowth. I got some neat new duds, don't I? These are Crimson Cult Rose. They are, you get them by, well, if I can look at them, you get them by taking the Crimson Cult armor and putting it through mana, and you get the Crimson Cult armor by bloodying up some chainmail, which is which in this pack is just made from regular old iron. I made all that, not because it's particularly good magic gear. I mean, look at that. V discount 1%. Weak sauce. But I made it because I am going to need it for this little ritual I have assembled here. I have both sets of Crimson Cult armor, um, with only one set of boots, because the, boot the boots are the same for both sets. And a single piece of void metal, which kindly enough makes it symmetrical. And I built a second Thaumonomicon in the center, which will receive all that power. And that will make us the Crimson Rites book. I think I might have mentioned this in passing at one point or another, but once I read this book, I will open myself up for another high-level warp effect that will give me more Eldritch knowledge, specifically the knowledge to access a special dimension. Ooh. Anyway, yes, you might have noticed this lovely little setup here. I made some applied energistics to facades. This is all just a bunch of wiring under them. And yes, it is linked to our storage network. Uh, yes, and I might as well do this while I talk. Ah, uh, yes, and those floating candles over there, they may look a little bit out of place, but they are in fact mirroring the floating whisper weeds. And if I take my abacus, well, I guess I can't see it while the infusion is happening. Anyway, they knock out the instability that these Whisperweeds were giving us, and in fact, they boost the stability of the altar all the way up to 19. Asymmetrical elements are worth, like, way tons of instability, so you really want to make sure if you put something down, you mirror it. Anyway, yeah, um, like I said... The item doesn't particularly matter. It can even be two different items. All that matters is that you have an infusion in, an infusion stabilizer sitting in the right position. So, I have that terminal sitting up there. Oop. The infusion must be complete. Down here, I neaten things up a little bit. I decided I wanted to switch around the processors and the uh, assemblers. I built kind of... I'm calling him Jerry, the friendly anti-wither. Yes. And, and note that the interfaces glow the color of cabling that they are sitting on. So beneath this facade, this is a shiny blue wire. Yes, and these AE2 facades are uh, a third type of facade that we need to stock up on now, which is eh, lovely. Over here, you notice that I've created tons of colored cables. That's because colored cables do not connect to each other. They will only connect to Fluix. Fluix connects to everything. And sitting on some of them, I have these P2P tunnels. What these do is they will pack as many channels as you like down into one channel and then they will transport it, and they will unpack it at the other end. You, you always need at least two of them. Every time I link it up, it will cost another channel. So, theoretically, I could have, like, 16 channels going there and 16 channels going somewhere else, and they could come off of this one, and it would just cost two channels on the cable, but that's not usually how you use them. Usually you use them for transporting bulk amounts of channels, just like one dense cable's worth at a time. Yes, we also have this dense cable. These dense cables are essentially just uh, regular old cables. Where's the fluix? They're essentially regular old cables 
wrapped in wool and then piled up with a little bit of redstone and glowstone. And these carry 32 channels. You see up on their on Wayla it says 11 out of 32. So these things can suck all 32 channels off of a face of a controller, giving you the most efficient use of it. Combine that with P2P tunnels, and you can switch back to cheapo, regular old cables, and you can just unpack them at the other end into another dense cable, and you can transport vast amounts of channels over distance very, very cheaply. Anyway, these colors all are going to various places. You see we have purple. This is going to the Thomcraft. You saw that on the other end, the interfaces were a different shade of purple than Fluix purple. We have green and we have red. These blue cables are all just internal to the AE2 area. And yes, uh, you notice that I expanded the amount of co-processing units and surprisingly, co-processing units don't seem to take a channel. It seems to just be crafting storage that takes a channel, which is interesting. Um, I don't know why I picked white for this direction. Maybe it's because it would have, yeah, would have connected with the blue onto the ME drive. Anyway, the green cable is just running underground over here to our Botania area. You see in the maintenance hatch, it's unpacking down here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be automating much of Batania. I know that there are a couple of things that call for runes and lenses, but I, I don't know. And over here in our mechanical area, we have, of course, the red cable. Popping up underground over there. And by running those trunk lines, if I need more than 32 devices hooked up in any one area, and I think this might be the only area that that would apply to, but if I ever need more than 32, uh, 32 channels, I could just run another red cable off a face in our AE2 lab and send it down that line. And then I would just have to pop it out on the end over here and suddenly I would have 64. Just off this one trunk line I ran, I can have up to eight dense cables. So I have a pretty immense amount of room to grow here. Oh yes, I turned on my air compressor because I somehow lost my scuba tank. And you know, while emptying out all the chests, I wanted to have the armor out. So yeah. Anyway, let us just take that Crimson Rights book that we just made. And this thing doesn't contain any text whatsoever. You just right-click it and receive some warp. Well, I guess it contains text that shows up in your Thaumonomicon. And scan it, and now I literally have no other use for it. Goodbye. Uh, yes, and um, finally, in real life, that golem naming contest just ended. Congratulations, young Mr. Carzoni II. You see that he is wearing a fez, glasses, a bow tie, and lovely little earth and air upgrades, making him very fast and very strong. So... All of this faffing around expanding the network. Oh yes, and um, new tool, memory card. You use this to configure various types of tunnels. So you have to shift right click it on one end to um, link and then you just right click it on the other to unlink and that tells the P2P tunnels where to go to. Anyway, all of this network expansion is making the network very, very, very thirsty. In fact, I have so much energy running on my network right now that if I were to turn on my lasers, I would suffer power brownout issues. So it is time and past time for us to start expanding our power network. Now, oh yes, that was a actual quest. And I imagine I know what that quested unlocked is. That would be under feels. Yes. It looks like I can't see it yet. 
Anyway, that's, I imagine it's just a quest to go to the Eldritch Dimension. Let's just put all that away. But I have been doing a little bit of research into what kind of things would work. And I think the mechanism gas burning generator is where we want to go for our main power production. I think the wiki said, and if the numbers haven't changed, I should be able to generate up to 20,000 RF per tick worth of ethylene just off one set of machines with the appropriate upgrades. So, uh, yeah, that is the path I want to take. That, that should be more than enough to last me until we can get a fusion reactor going. So, let us start to play around with our machines and program what we are going to need. Oh, yes, also I made an ever full urn. This is an infinite source of water that will automatically fill the, pet the petal apothecary. It's very cute. They're very easy to make, actually. They're a simple infusion. Anyway, I guess all this sort of dust. I'm going to need to start smashing some osmium. I'm going to need to start smashing some iron. And I'm going to need to start, like, yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a process. Actually, I think it's about time I put some speed upgrades in there. So what does... Yeah, that's going to take a new rolling machine for these cobalt plates. And I'm going to need a lot of air runes for those mana lenses of velocity. But I shouldn't need speed upgrades too terribly often, especially if I'm making factory machines. So I don't think I need to automate rune crafting. Although automating rune crafting is always a very fun challenge. Anyway, 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 anyway. Ah, uh, yes. Um, also, you notice that I've been filling out recipes mostly for just little things as I'm making them. Pistons and hoppers and various things made out of the essences. But yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, I think I'd actually like to program in a recipe for a rolling machine. So let's do that. Let's put some blank patterns in. And a rolling machine is going to cost us some brick construction blocks, some pistons, and some sheets of aluminum. Well, let's... Hmm. Aluminium, excuse me. Ah, I don't have any brick construction blocks on me, so let's automate that. I believe it's as simple as that and uh, that. Nope, it's the other way around, apparently. Mm hmm. Now, if I really want to be completionist about this, then I would want to... I, are, I already have iron bars programmed in here. But if I really wanted to make sure I can always craft this, I would want to make sure that I program in a recipe for burnt brick. The problem being, burnt brick requires processing in these vats, and that is an interesting challenge. We can't just, like, tell it. This is going to be an interesting process. So, to do this, we need to set the crafting, the pattern bench, into processing mode. So I'm just going to take, I think I'll use nether brick. I'm going to tell us to take one of those, and that turns it into a burnt brick. And that is how it goes. Now, I can't just put this in the molecular assembler, because this is not a crafting recipe. I need to tell it to go to the vats. So to do that, I need to use an ME interface. Yeah. These things don't just go on the molecular assemblers. And actually, if I'm going to do this, I think I would want to name this just so I know. So I'm going to name this VAT. Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to want to take a ton of red cable. 
And let's do this like... Okay. I think I would like to set this up so that it distributes evenly. So I'm going to want a logistical sorter on this thing. And I'm not sure if that's... If I have a pipe on them set to output, if they will take the intermediary product. Okay, let, let's test one thing at a time here. So, I'm going to need a chest. And I'm going to need some logistics pipes. So, first of all, let me just set these on the side just to reduce problems. It might be weird if it's on the top. Take my... There it is. I was just being blind. Okay, set all three of these to pull. And I should have brought some brick. So, if I just pull out of these, will it draw out the nether brick before it is done? Yes, yes it will. So, these things are also going to need logistical transporters on them. That's okay. It gives me an excuse to program in um, some of this stuff, like the logistical transporter and stuff. So let's set this back to crafting mode. And let's set this up to do a logistical transporter, I think, just right off the bat. Ah, I need these basic control circuits. That's easy enough. And that is going to require those redstone chipsets. Okay. And this I don't think I'll fully automate just yet, just because, you know, one thing at a time. But I'm sure that when I run out of something, I will remember that. So. Let's make that control circuit. Let's make like 10 of them. Okay, and now let's set it up to make the logistical transporter or sorter. There we go. Sorter sorted. And I'm gonna need four of them. So, let's have Wait. I only grabbed one. Damn it. I forgot they have a stack size of 1. I must have just shift clicked it. There we go. Come on. Come on. What? <sighs> you know what? I know for a fact that hoppers work with these things. That would be easier than logistical sorters. So let's just change how our piping network works. And, up and over. Okay. And I will facade that all up properly once this thing is properly programmed. Let's put a chest right here just to make things a little bit easier for me. Hopper one. Hopper two. And hopper three. 
Very good. Yes, next just have the transport pipe come right off of it. Set it to pull. And we'll just put that into the underside of the interface. Because if you pipe something into an interface, then it will just go back into the ME network. Actually, do I want that on the bottom? I think I'd like the ME cable on the bottom. No, that would connect to the... Yeah, okay. Bottom it is. Okay. Then I put my one logistical sorter on this. And... And I just dupe a dupe a dupe. A dupe, a dupe, a dupe. Good. And I tell it to do these one at a time, size yes, round robin on. And that should work. So I put the pattern right in here. I should have named this Lava Vat. There might be more types of vats. Eh, Lava Vat's really the only one you use a lot. Okay. So, if I were to put some nether bricks in here... Yes, you see them all coming out. They're sorting one at a time into the vats. And as they process, they should end up in the hoppers, which will transport them back out. Yes, see, burnt bricks are ending up back in the ME interface. And when I hook this up to the network, that means they will end up in the ME network. Excellent. So now all I need to do is hook this thing up. I like to run my cable along the floor. That way it's not spawnable space. Oh dear. This could be problematic. Just run it out behind us as we go. Ah, nope. I was being overly paranoid. So, I think I will just run it off this side of the dense cable. So that this will be the first of eight devices on this side of the dense that can be for uh, devices. And yeah, let's run it all the way back to the wall. I probably need more red cable. But the important thing is I found my way home. Wait, why is my vision? Oh, I have Deadly Gaze. Deadly Gaze is a relatively rare warp effect. It causes damage to, to any entity that I look at. So, uh, I don't know. Let's go scare the chickens, I guess. Hmm. Let's scare the cows. They can take it a bit better. Yes, you see, it's fine as long as I'm not looking directly at them, but if I... Ah! Yeah. That's part of the reason why I walled off all the golems, so that if I got this effect, they're okay. They're behind something. Okay, this should light up, showing four channels once it finds that interface. There it goes. Connection confirmed. And now, on the interface terminal, I should see that. Yes, and it has me making burnt bricks. Excellent. Let's just throw out all this miscellaneous crap. But yes, now I can order a little bit of burnt brick, and so long as I have nether brick in storage, it will be sent over to that interface. I said it'll be sent over to this interface. 
Hello. Why you know? Why you know? Um, okay. Let's try something. I think that sometimes, oh yeah. Emmy interfaces always try and push to whatever inventory they're hooked up to. So let's cancel that crafting job because otherwise it'll tie up our processor till the end of time. I think that maybe instead of storing it internally, it's trying to push it into the, into the sorter all at once. And the sorter don't do that. So instead, I'm just going to put a chest on top of this. I'm gonna delete these, no, yeah. I'm gonna just take those off, put the sorter back on, and it should still be programmed, yes. That actually looks a bit neater. Okay, take two. And burnt. 10 units. Yes. And as these complete, let's wait until I see one come out. As these complete, we should see on the crafting menu, it's ticking down and confirming that they're done. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We have automated that. Yes. This is the true power of Applied Energistics 2. It's not just a storage net. It's not just automated crafting. It is automated machining. With a little bit of experience and a little bit of ingenuity, you can automate pretty much almost anything. I mean anything. I have automated the infusion altar before. Heck, I have the technology to do that in this pack. Yeah, you can, you can automate all the things. Oh, I remember what I was doing. I was making a rolling machine. Yeah, that's what this was all about. I just wanted to show off that mechanic. So, Rick construction block. Gonna need at least one of those. Well, gonna need two of them. Rolling machine. And then it's what, a crafting bench? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna need some cobalt. the plots. Uh, oh, needs power. Derp. Mecha the plots. Actually, over here, let's just for laziness. Okay. Next time you're gonna need some mana lenses of velocity. Mana steel production is easy to automate. I could do that. No, no, no. Focus. Want to do power today. Want to get it done, at least the basics of it in this episode. Power. Doing power. We are not automating all the things. Yep. Okay, let's just put that all away, actually. And now I should just be able to... Yep. 
So that's a little bit of a production each time I want to do that, but it's not too bad. Oops. I want this. Yes. Okay, and now let's see how much that helps. Are they all in? Yes, they are. Look at that go. Now, for this pressurized reaction chamber, gonna need a bunch of intermediary products. Gonna need these advanced control circuits, which I might as well just do right now. Let's, um, let's get all of our old uh, buildcraft stuff just sorted away. Now, yep, I have everything in storage, but of course that's not going to last terribly long. I'm going to need to make tons of chipsets and stuff like that, and I'm probably going to have to just link these things up to the network, get them sorted. So much to do. So, next let's do personal chest. That's easy enough, that's just a bunch of steel and stuff like that. Easy peasy. Uh, what's next? Pressurized. Uh, gonna need these basic gas tanks. Yeah, that's what I needed to crush all that iron for. Which hopefully should be done by now. I think the third thing I needed was gold dust. Let's just get that going. And of course, I'm going to have to automate the crushing machine at some point. Uh, next, it needs these basic fluid tanks. That's really easy, actually. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can program this thing in, of course. No, almost certainly not. Oh, it needs an enrichment chamber. Okay. I don't think I have any quartz chipsets in storage. Oh, dear. We just ran out of power for some reason. It must be the new crushing factory. Yeah. How much energy is this costing? It needs 33,000 RF. <laughs> uh, that, that must just be because the buffer is filling. Let's empty it out. Okay. Okay, using, uh, it, wow, that went through the internal buffer fast. Well, let's see if those uh, energy upgrades are any good. So what are those energy upgrades going to cost? That's going to cost a metal ends of efficiency and ardite plates. Well, that's going to be some more rune crafting. Okay, I've got those energy upgrades sorted. Let's put those all in. Yes, that's just going to take a little bit. So I've got muffling, speed, and energy. Does this thing support anything else? No, I think this will be fully upgraded until we increase the amount of factory space. So let's see if that... Well, you see it's holding 360,000 RF now. Okay, it's using 900 RF per tick. Well, let's let's eject an energy upgrade and see if that. Uh... Yep, it actually reduced it a little bit. Wow. So uh, yeah, those energy upgrades they are useful for something, and it's more than just increasing the battery space, at least in regrowth. Might not be the same in Project Ozone and other more recent mods. 
So, <clears throat> where were we? Oh, yes, and I just made recipes for all that, anyway. No effect. Oh, there might be an effect, because I turned um, the chat off to block out that OpenGL error. Yeah. Well, it looks like it was effectless anyway. Anyway, thank you, Penny Linny Ding Dong, for pointing that out to me. It is very helpful for my sanity and for the filming quality, which are both about equally important. Okay, so we were making pressurized reaction chamber. For that, we need the enrichment chamber. For that, we need that steel casing. Uh, I'm going to have to lay down more modular assemblers pretty soon. Okay. That's good. Those quartz chipsets I need to get cooking. That's what I was doing when the power ran out. And yeah, this is probably going to cause brownouts in a little bit. So, let's set Enrich Mon Chambers. Get those auto craftable. I think I want these anyway because I'm going to be using them in a couple of places. And let's actually get one crafted. And, oh, I know what it is. Okay, so that 400 RF per tick, that's just what it costs to maintain the energy network. But it costs a huge power spike each time items move around. It costs RF to take items out. It costs RF to move items around in the network. And that includes doing auto-crafting. So whenever I'm doing those auto-crafting recipes, even though I am producing a surplus of power still, it's, it's uh, eating down the internal buffer and causing brownouts. And that. Yep, that makes the pressurized reaction chamber. Of course, that's just one of the devices I'm going to need. I'm also going to need electrolytic separators. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the same parts, except it's going to need one of these. It's going to need one of those. And I am out of basic alloy already. I told you, I'm going to need hundreds of that stuff. Thankfully, I thought ahead. Yes, but fairly shortly, I'm going to want to automate that. But I want at least a couple of gas burners up and producing more power first, so that I can feel good about having it constantly on device. So. Okay, electrolytic separator done. Finally, we are going to need the gas burning generator itself. That's pretty much a lot of the same parts, okay? Neat. Okay, next, I should, it'll need a dedicated crusher. I might as well automate that while I'm here. I need to make lava buckets. That's easy enough with essence. Normally you need to make a kind of dedicated machine for it, but... Mm-hmm. 
Uh, can you imagine doing all this by hand? Okay. Next up, I am going to need to set up a pumpkin patch and start assembling all these machines. I will get back to you in a moment. And from there, we are going to have to pipe them out and process them into ethanol, ethylene, whatever. I might need more cables than this. But yes, I'm going to need at least a little bit of power in order to get more power. We want you to input from the back. And sure, you can get your power from the bottom. But yes, that is biofuel being produced. And technically speaking, that is enough for us to do a little bit of power with in the first place. And actually, I think we have a quest for this. Let's see, enhances. Yes, it wants me to make a bio generator. Well, we can do that real quick. Bio generators just take biofuel and produce electricity. Now, one thing to address. Uh, this is just a detection task. That is okay. So we don't need to build that by hand. But I think if it was a crafting task, I would have to assemble the parts and then construct it by hand. Anyway, biogenerator, biofuel. Quest complete. Yes, and then the quests are going to walk me down that garden path because that really does look like it's the best power generation line. But let's just put one, like, right, I don't know, down here. And let's see here. Yeah. These biogenerators, just on their own, produce 280 RF per tick each. Oh, I see. It has an output on the bottom. That's interesting. Well, I, I guess I can do the configurator. No? I can't rotate it. Huh. Well... Ain't that a thing? If I wanted to be lazy about this, these biogenerators would probably be enough. See, they're producing 280 per tick. They go through biofuel fairly slowly. I imagine this crusher is producing more than enough to keep them fed. If not, I can just feed it speed upgrades. Yeah, this wouldn't be bad power generation. But I don't think I would be happy with this because uh, part of the ethylene production line is going to be, we're going to get something called substrate out of the pressurized reaction chamber, which we can use to produce these HDPE pellets, which we are going to need to make the sheets to make some advanced things that will help us with fusion later on. So I kind of want to do this properly to get some advanced materials as well as to make it even more ridiculously power efficient. Yeah, look at that. Oh, and they fill up with a pretty blue liquid too. That's really nice looking. Kind of like the noise. <laughs> Don't like that, clank clank. Need to get muffler upgrades for that. Yes, I do not want that clank clank. Oh, and listen to it. We can listen to it get quieter and quieter. And there it goes, it's gone. Do these things accept mufflers? No, these things don't accept upgrades at all. So it's still good that we have our power generation a little bit away from our base. So we don't have to put up with the noise even if the noise is kind of nice. So, let's actually do this by the quest. So what's the next quest? It wants me to make the electrolytic separator, a basic gas tank, and some basic pressurized tubes. Well, the pressurized tubes should be really easy. Yeah, that's just steel and glass. Let's actually make a stack of that. Okay. 
And is this a crafting task? It is. Well, let's see if the AE system counts. Because this is not HQM. This, or this is not BQM. This is HQM. I know it doesn't work for BQM. Yeah, see? I have to craft that basic gas tank by hand. There it goes. Electrolytic separator. Yes, and this gets me two basic gas tanks that are full of hydrogen and oxygen. Ah, yes. So, it's telling me to split water. <laughs> yes, and then it'll be the pressurized reaction chamber and all that. Excellent. Ah, there it is. So, it's water and hydrogen in... what? Hey. Personal space. It is a thing. You should respect it. God. Rude. Right. I'm going to need to take water and hydrogen into the PRC. Well, first of all, I need the PRC. And I have a quest to make a PRC. Pressurized reaction chamber. It is a crafting task, so I need to do this by hand. Yes. Pressurized reaction chamber. Okay. That's that quest. Not quite solved because it needs the gas burning generators. Okay. Gas burning generator. That is what will actually burn the ethylene. And that completes the task. And that gave me a tank full of ethylene. Okay. Let's go and test out this gas burning generator and see how long it lasts. So, if I put the basic gas tank down, yeah, you hear it making that noise? The uh, red the uh, red diamond side of a gas tank is the output, and every other side can act as an input. So, yeah, you notice it dumping out pretty darn quick. It's burning 50 millibuckets, or whatever, per tick, I guess. And it's producing 14,000 RF per tick? What? That is, um... Th that, that is, um... That is, um... Yeah, that's 140 RF per tick, and that's... Four... Um... Um... Wow. That's, um, that's power. That, that is, that is, that is power. That, oh, wow. That, that is more power than I was expecting. Um, so yes, we need to automate this. We need to automate this right now. We need to get all the power. Okay, it accepts water in the back and it outputs gases to the three sides, I think. I don't know. Let's, let's test that. Let's get a couple buckets of water. Yep. Not this time, mind spiders. Okay, maybe it can only accept from tubes. You know what it is? Maybe that gas valve is on the bottom. Oh man, with that, with that gas burning generator, we have a bit of a rave going. Put that on down there. Should be able to pull out both sides. No, only out the top. That's interesting. Okay, there we go. Ooh, listen to that. We are getting ethylene and substrate. Yeah, I should have worked backwards from the PRC. That's just going to be done on the bottom. Again? Would you guys cut it out? <sighs> And yes, I am going to have to clean up this cancerous mess of cables before I button it all up. Now I just need to take care of the substrate. And I think I'll just put that in a drawer for right now. But later on, I'm going to want 
to figure out a way to transport it to the storage network. Yeah, this is... This is a lot of power I have to play with now. That should last me quite a while. So, um, yeah. I'm just going to have to monitor this and see if anything needs speed upgrades. I'm um, gonna need to chunk load it, of course. And this should... This should be very, very good. Oh my, yes. I... I... I, I have no words. The failure. The sheer, industrial-grade failure. <sighs> well... As I'm sure you've all already seen, as I'm sure I'll mention in post and, you know, as I figure out something to do with this, OBS just recorded, like, an hour of audio, and the video was just the pause screen. I was running around, I was doing stuff, and all that it was on the video was the Minecraft pause screen. I have no idea why. I have double-checked. I have triple-checked my settings. <sighs> well, uh, I, I guess that I will have to just root through it and see if I said anything at all interesting or funny and maybe make some sort of, I don't know, something to go along with it. But um, here is a, uh, here, here is what I built in all that time. This is our little gas-burning plant. It is producing way more electricity than I was expecting. The wiki told me that these gas-burning generators only produce like 300 RF per tick. No, they produce like 30,000 RF per tick. So I was expecting to like have to build a huge tower of them, but no, just this, just this one is going to like probably doom until I can get to fusion. And if not, I can just expand this line because I'm producing way more ethanol than it's burning, even with just one, e even without any speed upgrades in anything. And I know for a fact that I can run this at a higher speed. I am producing Buku pumpkins. Yeah. So, um, let's run through this machine. You could say that this machine has two hearts, two resource feeds that it starts from. First, it starts with this electrolytic separator being fed by an Everfull urn. This is just a really simple, compact, infinite water source. And its second resource feed is this pumpkin patch with our new friend here. Hello, yes, I do appreciate my long-term fans. These pumpkins are being run underground into this spruce drawer here. And the electrolytic separator is just taking water and turning it into hydrogen and oxygen in these two tanks here. One thing to note about gas tanks is their output side is that red triangle. You can program them to be otherwise, but that's just how they are by default. Now, these gas tanks are set up so that the oxygen is dumping excess, the hydrogen is not. So that it will never be limited just by oxygen. It will only produce as much hydrogen as it needs, because hydrogen is the one we really want. We are using oxygen for something, but we're only using a tiny amount of it. Anyway, so the hydrogen feed goes through to this pr pressurized reaction chamber. Also going into it, are the pumpkins, essentially. These pumpkins are being drawn out into a crusher, which turns them into biofuel, and that gets piped out into the PRC. Finally, also from our Everfull urn, we just have a little bit of water coming in. So this PRC is combining water and hydrogen into ethylene. And it is producing something called substrate, which as you can see is being piped underground. We will meet it again later. So, this ethylene comes out, and almost right away, it goes to the gas-burning generator. It burns it as fuel, and it produces a ridiculous amount of electricity. And it's going into this rotary condensentrator. That is taking gaseous ethylene and turning it into liquid ethylene in condensentrating mode. 
that liquid ethylene is being piped out to another pressurized reaction chamber, which is also using the oxygen from our first electrolytic separator. So it is taking that oxygen and that ethylene, that liquid ethylene, and it is taking the substrate from the ethylene producer to produce HDPE pellets. These things will eventually be used to make sheets, which I will use for solar neutron activators. To my knowledge, that is the only use of substrate. But um, getting HDPE is not the real purpose of this machine. The real purpose is getting power. The HDPE is just a nice sight effect. So yeah, that is a machine I just spent an hour derping and experimenting and running wiring and I, I did that all on camera because, you know, normally I cut that up into little bits, but like I figured I would do it all on camera and, you know, I would try and talk through it and I'd fit and, but, but, but it was not to be. It was not to be. Ugh. Anyway, so that is what we did today. And now we have so much power. It really honestly, like, just with this one thing, I, don't, I think I'm never going to have to worry about power again. If, if there weren't quests coming up, yeah. There is a quest line to build a fusion reactor, which is the next tier of power production. But if that weren't a quest, I would never do that, because this is seriously more than enough power. But I guess that we will go down the path of excession. But that's not what we'll be doing next time. Next time, we are just going to be continuing on, automating all the things, and we are going to be filling out the quest book a little bit, because I have been neglecting that. So it's time to start filling out all the quests and getting into the end game. So I hope you'll meet me all then. Have fun. And OBS, if you have screwed me over again, then I swear to God, I will make another flesh golem and put it back in the Well of Suffering.